Hello boys and girls, men and women. Welcome back to Richard's Toy Room once again. We've got another model review and build here for you. This one is one I've wanted to build for a while. Um, it wasn't available, at least I don't remember it being available for a long time, uh, even though I had known about the kit. And um, I know this has been released a few times. I'm not sure if this is the latest release or if there was one more after this. Because uh, they kind of, I, I remember seeing them in the store kind of about the same time. And there was a different, whole different box art on it. They seem to do that once in a while. The round two, they'll like have a kit like this where it'll be like uh, with all these custom parts and wild graphics. And then they'll re-release it with a whole new subject matter. And it'll be like uh, drag racing or it'll be like some, you know, just bone stock car or whatever, even though it might still have all the same exact parts in the kit. For some reason, they do that um, quite often, I've noticed. Anyhow, getting off track, uh, what we got today is the 1971 Ford Thunderbird. Um, Thunderbird's always been in one of my uh, sort of favorite cars. I've owned three of them over the uh, course of my driving life. Uh, I'm not currently the owner of one, but... This isn't exactly my favorite era of the car, but it's it's not bad. Um, I've got a car that I like. If you watch my other videos, a 78 Lincoln, and I'm happy with that for now. I'm, uh, I mean, I think I'd like to get something with fins at some point, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, let's look at uh, the box here. So we've got the stock version. Uh, this is not like a Landau or anything like that. It does not come with a vinyl top and, and molded in or anything of that sort. I'm not sure exactly which model this is in the hierarchy of the uh, Thunderbirds of this year. I've been doing a little research, but it's kind of hard to figure that out. They also made a four-door, which obviously this is not. This is a two-door. So I'm thinking this is somewhere in the middle, maybe. Maybe not the highest-end model, but not the uh, low-end model, because it does come with the high-back bucket seats which they also show on here on the back side. Um, they show you some like slicks there and some other doodads you can put on. There's not a whole lot of custom parts in here. There's just a handful. And the ends are just basically the same as the cap or the uh, box front. So move that out of the way. So here's the instruction sheet. And I took a quick look at the kit before I uh, started the video. I did not look at the instruction sheet, but the, um, the kit has a pretty low part count, um, you know, compared to other kits. I believe this was most likely derived from uh, what they used to call the uh, promos that they would give out at the dealer. It's got, um, I'll show you when we get to it, but it's got the uh, screw together body and, you know, like I said, very, very low uh, parts count in, in the kit so here's uh, the, the instructions it's just four pages which I don't mind um, this is the kind of instruction book I was used to when I was first started building model kits the you got your basic engine here which uh, has about the typical amount of parts that you expect and um, funny thing is as you see over here when you get to the chassis you have an option of putting the engine you built in or just a plug with the bottom of the engine and transmission into the hole in the frame so you can build just a roller car and glue the hood shut and, and you don't have to uh, build, a, build an engine. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but some people would. I know they still make models like that. Uh, basically, look, you got like, <laughs> including the parts of the seats you've got uh, six parts that go into the interior here which is not a whole lot um, you got your wheels and um, optional like slicks uh, like I said you get to the engine and the uh, at least they gave you some separate uh, exhaust even though it's all combined in with the the rear axle and all that at least it gives you a little more detail there not that you really look at the bottom of the kits that much but you know it's something to do while you're building it's fun same thing here on the uh, front I mean barely any parts to put together in here you got your one piece front and back windshield and uh, basically a firewall and a 
separate radiator and that's it there and then you're on to the final assemblies and you basically got either stock or custom not a whole lot to it I mean you got to throw the hood on throw the battery in throw the grill on throw the tail lights on and you're done there and then here you can do a couple options with the uh, smaller back window and um, I don't know what this thing is custom headlight oh lock out the headlight covers that's it there's there's not a whole lot to it so it should be a pretty straightforward kit to build so why don't we take a look at what you get in the kit we start with the chrome tree pretty basic chrome tree there's not much on here you got wheels and uh, a couple of oddball engine parts and your basically your bumpers I don't know why for some reason they give you five stock wheels here that's weird because they don't even give you five stock tires so anyhow it's the mysteries of how they've reissued kits over the years <laughs> again not a whole lot there you go that's it that's all the white parts besides the uh, body and frame and interior so here's a piece of the engine that fell off of this one you want if you're going to build your engine that's basically all that's on there in a firewall then you've got your I'm not sure if those are headers or if they're the actual exhaust ones you use I didn't pay attention when I was looking at the uh, instructions but either way you just got a few parts on there you've got your seats high back bucket seats which were an option in the real car and here's the backs of them go on there your hood it's decent it's got um, the hood pad embossed underneath and here's that engine plug thing I was telling you about where you can pop that in and you don't have to uh, build the engine for the car here's your basically uh, this is all just your one piece exhaust and rear axle and uh, your steering wheel right there in the middle and your dashboard they don't give me any decals or well, maybe they do I didn't look at them yet let me take a quick peek before I commit to that no they don't give you any decals for the dashboard and there are details in there although I'm not sure how easy they would be to bring out they're kind of deep in there and, and shallow. Uh, before we get to the body, let's look at some of these extra parts. You basically got a bag here with your two metal axles and your four screws that you screw the body together with. Tell you the truth, I actually kind of like having the body screwed together because then you don't have to worry about where you're going to glue it and if it's going to, you know, fit right. Um, seems to me like if it's like this kind of kit with the screws, it goes together uh, a lot more accurately but then it also looks a lot crappier because it looks like a snap together kit almost here is your windshield they give you an option of blue tint or clear I mean it would be neat if uh, you could actually take the tint and give this like one of those uh, sun visor bands on the top but I'm not going to go to that length and then you got your neat one piece red tail light there that'll that'll look good when it gets all glued into that chrome bumper I'll leave those in there so they don't get scratched. Uh, let's take a look at this hideous decal sheet. So they give you um, a lot of different license plate options here, which is kind of neat. Although they're pretty much all dated like 1971, so that limits to uh, the vehicles you can use it on. So I probably would maybe use one of these and then maybe one of the regular ones on the back. Maybe use one of these as like a vanity plate on the front. But these hideous hippie decals I have no way I'm putting those on the car <laughs> they're just ugly and then you get your typical round two uh, outdated product catalog and join their uh, mailing list postcard if you want to take a trip back in time and of course this I never build these this is the little mini box that's um, like a replica of the uh, original box. I have no use for those really, so that'll just go back in, in the box. And lastly, we have the body. 
the interior pan, and the chassis. This chassis is a thick hunk of plastic. This is like heavy. I mean, <laughs> this is a big thick hunk of plastic that they give you here, but it's, it's, um, it's actually got uh, quite a bit of detail on it for what it is. So you can, you can pick out some of your things like the gas tank down here and yeah, whatever else your floats your boat there. But the only thing I don't like about it is they mold in the, ba the valances for the front and the back into the chassis pan. So that's going to be a kind of a pain in the butt to tape off and, and paint just because they decided they didn't want to put those as a separate piece to put on. Not to mention this piece here is chrome on the real car so they should have made this a separate piece and chromed it. So that's never going to look quite right because there's no paint that that quite matches the chrome from the model company because um, you can't really duplicate that at home too easily but it'll, it'll be close and plus it's an underneath part so it won't be that um, prominent but still the point I was trying to make. The interior Eh, not a whole lot of detail in there. I mean, they got you some... The carpet's got some texture and the seat's got some um, ribs in it from the upholstery and the door panel, same thing, but you know, you can't... Uh, I mean, you can't see... I don't see any, like, uh, window switches or anything like that. So it's, it's, it's a pretty shallow detail. Plus, it looks like it's molded kind of messed up. I don't know if you can see up top here. It's like one side sticks out too far. It's going to have to be trimmed down. I tried fitting it in the car and it does actually uh, interfere, so it will definitely need to be trimmed. And finally, we got this really sweet body, which is really nice. Uh, the only thing I don't care for on it is the emblems, which are almost impossible to see down here they say Thunderbird it's a really tiny script I mean they're not even that you're not they're not even big on the real car as you can see because how tiny they are on the, on the replica and that's going to be really hard to pick out that would have been nice to have a decal to put on also with the uh, little emblems on the sail panels here would have been nice for uh, to have a decal and also on the, the front clip here on the nose but everything else is pretty prominent and looks like it'll be fairly easy to pick out and uh, paint and all that stuff. Just a couple of issues with uh, ridges on the, on the body lines that are pretty sharp and they're going to be a little difficult to kind of cut down without taking the detail out. So anyway, there you go. That's the whole kit. So the next time you see the kit, we will be doing an update on it and letting you know how it's going. Oh, I just realized I didn't show you the tires. You get six tires. You get four of these. They're solid Goodyear branded tires. There's no uh, white lettering or white wall on them, which would have been nice if they would have done that because I really hate painting white walls. And then you get these slicks, which are hollow. Usually, usually the slicks you see are uh, solid, but these are these are hollow slicks, um, and they do have painted white letter Goodyear white letters on them on the one side anyway. The other sides are blank. But um, since I build stock, I obviously will not be using these. And um, again, stay tuned for the updates. And welcome back to the final reveal for the 1971 Ford Thunderbird. Now, I had a lot of issues with this, and not so much with the model itself, but with paint. Again, I have the absolute worst luck when it comes to the paint jobs on the cars. In fact, I just painted one yesterday that everything was going perfect on it. I painted the body on it. It even looked great, it's, you know, right after I finished painting it while it was still wet and everything was all shiny and glossy and looked just, I was like, this is going to be beautiful, this is going to be perfect. I uh, set it aside to start drying and I checked it, oh, maybe like an hour or so later, all of a sudden I'm starting to see these like 
I don't know what to call it because I don't know the exact terminology, but it like, almost looks kind of like, um, like, you know those pictures that used to have the satin finish instead of the glossy finish that was real popular back in like the 70s, 80s, when you used to get your pictures printed, and they called it satin finish. I'm getting spots like that in random areas on the car for no reason. Like, like part of it looks perfect. Like, I'm, I'm just using this car to show you on the example. Like, the fenders up here, beautiful, shiny. The top of the fenders, beautiful, shiny. And then down here in the back, like underneath the, say, where the behind the rear tire, all grainy for no reason at all. I mean, just, you know, one area right next to the other. It makes no sense. The hood, like, there was, like, half of it looked good, and the other half was all, like, that satiny look. I, I, I don't know what is going on, why I have the worst absolute luck painting. It drives me crazy. It almost makes me want to stop doing the cars, because that's the main thing you see when you're doing a model, is the exterior paint job. I mean, you could have everything done perfect and all the little details and wire your engines and paint your hubcaps and whatever you want and and but if that paint job looks like crap you might as well not do anything more to the car it just ruins everything so I just wish I knew what the hell was going on I've tried different paints I've tried different doing it uh, different you know temperatures uh, tried you know Nothing seems to work. It just you know, different primers. I've tried spraying closer. I've tried spraying farther away. I've tried spraying faster, slower. I mean, nothing works. It's just a nightmare. And I've tried looking up online, and I get a little bit of hints here and there. I try, but none of them really seem to work for me. Anyway, I'm going way off on a tangent here. We're here to discuss the finale of this, or the um, final reveal of of this Thunderbird. So, I. I wish I would have remembered to grab the paint can. I tried that Duplicolor paint on this. First time I ever bought it. And it came out looking really nice. But then when I did a second coat on it, it looked horrible. And I had to basically strip the whole car down. And it would not strip in the purple stuff. It literally took me like two weeks and I still couldn't get all the paint down so it looked like bare white plastic. Like usually I could dip a car overnight and in, in the morning all the paint falls off oh, practically. This, I don't know what the hell they make that, that duplicolor paint out of, but good God, I, I'm pretty sure it's an acrylic lacquer, and that's probably what the problem was. And I'm not sure what I should have used to, to strip it, but oh my God, it was it was a ver oh that made me not even want to complete the kit. Almost, it was so bad. I finally got it off after scrubbing and scrubbing, and I think I lost a little bit of the detail, but not a lot. I was trying to be pretty careful about that. Anyway, so I ended up repainting the whole car. Um, I wasn't sure if it had something to do with the primer I used because I wasn't I didn't realize I was an acrylic lacquer that the paint was uh, so I, I may have I used a, a gray rust-oleum enamel primer and that probably didn't help so I used a lacquer uh, primer this time and it came out okay it wasn't perfect but what I, instead of clear coating it like uh, I originally intended to do because it does need to be clear coated. I use the um, this stuff, formerly Future, now called Pledge Floor Care Finish, and that was the uh, clear coat I put on it. And I actually, I think it came out pretty damn good. I'm happy with it. Um, there were some issues with this car. Uh, fit uh, up here somewhere. I think in the cowl. I had to do a lot of trimming to get the the interior to fit up in there all the way right. Uh, the body went together really nice. Things I didn't like about it were this part here and this part here are molded into the floor pan. So I had to paint this. Well, actually, that didn't matter because I painted the body uh, 
depending on underneath body color. But this one is supposed to be chrome, or at least a stainless steel uh, piece under here. And of course, they didn't give you a piece to put in their chrome, so I used my Molotov chrome pen on that. Um, I actually used different tires on this than it came with. I took tires from that Lincoln kit, the, the uh, custom tires, because these had uh, white letter pad printed tires on, or pad printed wall, uh, sidewalls on them. So they, they fit, they, were a, they weren't real tight on the rim, but they fit enough. You know, I put a little glue so, you know, so they wouldn't like uh, fall off. But I like these a lot better than the tires that it came with. I don't usually do that. But um, here's the uh, this box out of the way. Here's the back end of it. I really love the tail lights on this. The interior came out pretty good. I did. Um, this is burgundy. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have grabbed the can. I can't remember what the color was that this was called, but it was. Um, I think it was a Chrysler color, and it was like uh, cranberry or something like that. P cranberry pearl or something. But. Um, Burgundy, a metallic burgundy was one of the optional colors on this on this original real car, and I like that, so that's what I wanted this to come out as. So I'm trying to remember what else was the issue on this. Um, oh, let me pop the hood here. That's another thing. This, the hood is really hard to get open. Let me see if I can get in here. Maybe I'll try from back here. Now I could have, I'll show you when I get this off. Now it will stay open like this for display purposes, if you like it to do, do your models like that. But it also does come off, obviously. Um, I didn't paint the under hood, under, underside of this one. But it comes with these pins here that go into these holes in the uh, radiator uh, support and you could cut these off and then you know it would be a lot easier to open the hood but I found that these tend to lock into these holes and keep the hood down flush better um, the engine itself as long as I got this here before I put it on the turntable I'll give you a view in here This is the engine you get. One thing I didn't like about it, it was terrible. The, the, the battery is actually supposed to be up here, but it wouldn't fit there. The radiator and fan shroud, I literally had to cut the whole center of the radiator out so I could slide it down over the fan because there's literally no room between this uh, uh, front part here, radiator support, and the... And the uh, engine of the fan and everything is sitting in there where it's supposed to be so that was like a terrible fit there plus they didn't give you stock um, engine uh, exhaust manifolds they give you these headers if you can, might be able to see them under there like that not not very yeah uh, there's there's literally no master cylinder no booster there's nothing on the firewall Barely at all. Um, just very minimal, minimal detail on, on some of this. The things they left off were kind of surprising. Um, let's see if I can get you a look inside, maybe we're up here. I did do some detailing in the dash. Try to anyway. Um, I think if there was anything else that was an issue. Um, no, I think that was about the main things. I can't really think of anything else. Everything else went together fairly well, as far as I remember. Just that I had that horrible paint problem. So, 
that's the 71 Thunderbird. So let's get it on the turntable and uh, give you that final 360 reveal. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you stick around for more. Thanks for watching.